much for the introduction. And, uh, so I'm Mike McCurdy, I'm from ICF. Um, I've come on over from the States myself, but we have a large uh, office in Delhi here where we support our, uh, our Indian colleagues with uh, energy issues, including uh, biofuels and, and power and a number of different sectors. Uh, next slide, please. So really, uh, if you look at uh, renewable natural gas in, uh, in an Indian context, uh, we're really looking at three pillars of uh, sustainability. We've got a, a social, uh, social sustainability, and that's uh, mostly we look at energy security and uh, jobs here in the country and basically um, around the world. Uh, we also look at uh, fiscal sustainability. Can't make any money in the, uh, in the RNG sector. There's not going to be much in the RNG sector. And then uh, finally, kind of the environmental sustainability uh, portion of the, of the equation. Uh, as, as Dr. Garvin so uh, brilliantly uh, mentioned, the, uh, the greenhouse gas uh, damage from uh, methane is, is far greater than that of uh, carbon dioxide. Uh, the California regulators who put uh, rules in place regarding the, uh, uh, the carbon intensity of different uh, technologies actually use a 25 times uh, factor. So each, each molecule of uh, methane is, 25, is equal to 25 carbon dioxide molecules. Uh, next slide. So in the United States, we um, the American Gas Association, which is the principal uh, gas producers in the United States have been under pressure uh, for environmental sustainability. And so they retained uh, ICF to take a look at really the potential for renewable gas production in the United States. Um, so we went through and we really started taking a look at the different uh, sources of uh, renewable natural gas and landfills, uh, waste water treatment plants, and uh, getting into gasification of biomass and even uh, uh, later power to gas. And we found out that, uh, at least in the United States, we really have the potential to, to produce about a third of our, our natural gas usage via uh, bio methods. And another uh, exciting aspect of the renewable natural gas um, within India and or uh, the United States is the, the spread of the different uh, technologies. You've got uh, landfill gas, wastewater treatment plants, other other processes that are produce natural gas from the waste of the cities. And the, those sources are, are near cities, you know, where they're going to be used. And then, you, then you've got uh, animal waste, um, forestry products, and uh, agricultural waste that can be converted into renewable natural gas. And that's also uh, that those outfits uh, produce renewable natural gas out in rural areas providing jobs and, and opportunities where uh, in many cases there aren't many other opportunities. Next slide, please. So the first thing really that the renewable natural gas is the environmental sustainability. Um, the renewable natural gas here, in, or at least in uh, the California accounting methodology is uh, usually somewhere around 50, 40 to 50 grams of CO2 per megajoule of energy consumed. So that's about half of what um, a, a diesel engine would require um, versus uh, using renewable natural gas in the combustion process. So you're, you're, uh, by using RNG, you basically cut your uh, CO2 emissions in half. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, uh, this is a, a relatively new feature of the, our accounting processes in the United States, but in, in 2019, the, the California Air Resources Board started looking at uh, negative carbon intensity, negative uh, uh, CO2 emissions projects. And in the United States, at least the animal uh, livestock operations, they're, they're not regulated, so they, uh, uh, the methane emissions off their digesters goes right up in the air. So, um, within their, their California Low Carbon Fuel Standard Program, they basically allow people to voluntarily opt in and capture the methane that's, that's produced at these uh, dairy operations. And uh, 
run that through a, a, a combustion engine to destroy that methane and, and turn it into CO2. And when you do that, you end up with uh, getting negative carbon intensity figures. Um, and just as an example, the, the Fair Oaks dairy, which is a, a dairy in, in the United States, they got a, a negative 254 grams of CO2 score. So every Every uh, megajoule of RNG consumed in the, in the, uh, the transport sector actually uh, is basically carbon negative for, uh, for that technology. Oh, next slide, please. So going into, uh, I'm, I'm kind of skip through this slide real quick, but the uh, the RNG is uh, it's it's a nice predictable uh, cost. Projects, uh, landfill gas, um, digesters, all these different uh, technologies. They're they're proving to be easier and easier to finance, uh, particularly when, when we start incorporating the methane capture aspects. And uh, so that really could present some major opportunities uh, here in India, as um, as we work with various international, public, and even private financing bodies to. Uh, um, put the renewable natural gas systems in place. Um, you know, I think that uh, CO2 and methane are, are global pollutants versus uh, local pollutants like a SOX or a NOx or something like that. So um, when people start looking at, at financing projects, they're, they're more willing to finance projects in India or other developing countries to capture the CO2 and methane because um, a CO2 molecule CO2 put up anywhere in the world is going to have the same uh, effect on our global climate. Next slide. And so uh, basically on the fiscal sustainability of this, uh, in the United States, the natural gas, the fossil natural gas is about $3 per million BTU of uh, energy content. Uh, when you start adding in all of these, uh, the carbon credit value under the LCFS program and um, some other U.S. renewable fuel standard. You can actually get up as high as $85 a million BTU of uh, gas. So it really makes this these projects tremendously attractive to uh, financial investors. And we'll see um, equity outfits come in and fund projects um, in, in you know, uh, debt providers and, and all sorts of financial um, financial interests are involved in the program. Next slide. And then uh, probably the last real issue is um, we're, we're looking at power to gas being a, a, a big game changer here in the uh, the upcoming years. Basically, where uh, renewable systems, particularly those that are curtailed within the uh, the grids. Or, if grid's not available to take all of the, uh, the electricity produced, um, using that electricity to make hydrogen, which is then converted into methane, using either biological methods or, or catalytic methods, and then using that, that methane as the storage, uh, that energy storage in lieu of a battery or something like that. So um, it really, there is a tremendous potential um, in India, United States, and elsewhere as far as um, using that natural gas and uh, basically it's uh, emission free because it's capturing CO2 from the atmosphere, combining that with the hydrogen that's produced in the, uh, um, from the solar, pal uh, solar panels. Uh, next slide. Then um, this is almost more of a technical issue for the, uh, the Indian oils and other, other large um, uh, institutions here in India, but uh, the United Nations has put together a, uh, a method by which you can classify the renewable reserves. And what that allows them to do is uh, typically a large oil operation, uh, exploration company would uh, report how many barrels of oil they've got under the ground or whatnot. Um, for the first time, the, the UN came in and stepped in and put together a program where uh, a renewable outfit can, can classify their reserves the same way. And so it's interesting in that you can start valuing these RNG projects based on the, uh, 
the total RNG you're going to produce over the lifetime of the asset, not um, your EBITDA figures uh, on an annual basis. So it uh, could provide a, a big opportunity, especially for uh, for projects that are kind of satisfying the sustainability development, sustainable development goals (SDGs) of uh, the United Nations and uh, big uh, international financiers. Next slide. So really, kind of in, in conclusion, you know, RNG really can provide a, a secure and indigenous resource in, in low capitalists throughout India. Um, negative carbon intensity RNG projects provide significant financial returns to their owners. Um, power to gas is, is likely to be a very big topic here in the upcoming years and really prevent an present an opportunity to uh, maximize our the renewable contribution to the grid and, and in both financial and uh, in grid security. And finally, that uh, the UNFC bioenergy specification really may uh, allow uh, RNG producers here in India to really capitalize on additional financing available through uh, public uh, entities in internationally and, 